Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the State Machine Gem, what it is, how to use it, what the heck a State Machine is. It's going to be amazing. Alright, what is State Machine? State Machine is my favorite metal band. I'm just kidding. Although I did look up later and found out that there is in fact a band called State Machine, so I think we can all be pretty excited about that. Anyways, in programming, a state machine is a formalized set of conditional logic that allows for various behaviors depending on the condition of whatever the state machine is on. It could be an object or a function depending on where you're implementing it. And if that sounds a little like too jargony, that's okay. It is pretty jargony. And I will give a better example, or I will explain it better by giving examples of what it is. It's a super important concept in real life, in programming, and so on. So in real life, you could think of a lock, for example, as something that has states and different behaviors that are permissible depending on the state, right? You have an unlocked state, and in that state, you can open the door, close the door, walk through it, and so on. But in a locked state, you can't open the door or close the door or walk through it. So things like that. Um, another one, for example, could be a laundry machine, a coin-operated laundry machine. If you haven't put coins in it, you can't run it. If you have put coins in it, you can run it. So there are these states of paid for or unpaid for, and that affects the behavior of whether you can start the machine or whether you can't. So not to, not to belabor the point, I just wanted to give you a couple real-life examples so how about in programming? One of the really common classes that would have a state machine is a user class. So think about the coffee shop example that I always go to and say you need to make an employee management app for them and all the employees will sign up. And by the way, we're not just one coffee shop. Now it's like a whole international operation with you know, tons of stores, tons and tons of employees people in different departments, and so on. So before we dive too much into how to construct a machine, we need to think about this. Okay, what are the various kinds of employees and what can they do? So say at our coffee shop conglomeration, there are some baristas, there are shift managers, store managers, IT people, HR people, executives. We also have to think about the fact that a person who could be a barista right now or could be a store manager right now will not always have that or they will not always be in that role. They might get promoted, they might get demoted, they might leave the company entirely. But while they're in the system, they have to have access to different behaviors. So like for example, a barista can make coffee and an HR person can't. Or a shift manager has access to certain schedules that the barista doesn't. Store managers know a little bit more. You know, district managers have a broader sense of what's going on in their district, so they have access to other things, but they can't pour coffee. The HR people can't fix computers, the IT people can't hire and fire people, and the executives are pretty far removed from day-to-day -day life, but they actually have abilities to make decisions about how the company as a whole is run. So you can think about like what are various activities that people at each of the different roles have or don't have. And then think about, you know, what is the path for someone to transition from a new employee all the way up to executive. You know, there's a lot there's a lot of change that happens in there and you'll have to be updating their permissions as time goes on. So let's look at this this actual one that I wrote. It's a very simple example. You can probably find, well you can definitely find, a more complex example on the State Machine Gems page on GitHub and I would suggest looking at that ultimately. But to start out with, their example is fairly complicated so I wanted to keep this one a little bit more simple. So there's a little bit of setup to get it to work, of course. 
you've got to put the gem in your gem file and bundle install it. Now, to add the logic to a class, you have to create a block which starts out with state machine and then puts the initial state here. And everything from, from the do to the end will have events within it. And it's events that change the state of a user in this case or whatever object you put it on. And it's fairly, fairly intuitive, which is nice. So when you create an instance of user in your database, you can it, it will start out as unconfirmed. And you can now these each show up as class methods that can be called on instances of user. And it will change their state from whatever to some other thing. So to start out with, they're unconfirmed, say in real life they got pushed through the system, all their paperwork is taken care of, and so you'd call the confirm method on them, and they would now be a full-on barista, which is great. Now, they're doing really well, the manager's happy with them, so they're going to get promoted to a shift manager. And at that point you can call the promote method on them and they become a shift manager. Now the really, really nice thing is you can use this promote method over and over again, all the way from barista to shift manager, from shift manager to store manager, store manager, district, district, all the way up to executive. And you don't have to make you know a different method for each transition of state. Now, think about this. So this is a very linear, you know, you can you can easily see this happening, right? Someone going from barista all the way up to executive. But say that at some point someone says, you know, I don't really want to go the management route. I want to become an IT person. So regardless of where they are in the chain of roles, you can call this promote to IT method and they will go from being whatever they were before now to being an IT person. And the same I have here with promote to HR. Say a district manager doesn't want to become an executive. They want to become an HR person. Here's the method for that. And of course, say for some reason they leave the company, you can call the discontinue method and whatever they were in the process, they will switch to being discontinued and you can revoke all the permissions for their account. So that I think is a, is a pretty brief overview of state machines. I will add a disclaimer that the gem has not been updated in several years, at least as of when I'm recording this video. So you might have to, you might encounter some errors along the way and you might have to Google for it. But what's new? That's, <laughs> that's some pretty universal advice for all programming. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you all in the next video.